the school of aquaponics. So we know that life originated around 3.5 billion years ago. And it started with simple organisms like uh, the present day bacteria. And over thousands of years, uh, the complexity of these cells increased through a process known as natural selection. Now, natural selection is quite simple to understand. You have organisms that produce and they have offspring um, which differ slightly from one another. Um, and some of these offspring that have um, features and genetics that make them poorly adapted to the environment. Um, and then they're uh, more likely to grow poorly and reproduce poorly. And then there's other offspring that obtain favorable features to the environment, um, which will adapt well over time and they will reproduce abundantly. And obviously the offspring with the unfavorable uh, features will be least likely to survive and reproduce um, and continue the lineage um, especially when you're competing against um, other offspring that have favorable um, uh, characteristics to the environment. So this is the survival of the fittest, and this is especially important when you're competing for limited uh, resources. So this is just a quick overview of natural selection. Obviously, there's more in-depth information um, on the subject, but we're just going over, uh, uh, touching on the surface of it. Um, so uh, overwhelmingly, this is the consensus amongst um, biologists um, that natural selection is most consistent with the observation of uh, organisms, um, experiments, and theoretical considerations. So as th this is the best explanation for explaining how um, organisms came to be um, in present day. So with that being said, around 2.8 billion years ago, there was a major evolution that was responsible for the process known as photosynthesis. Now, this is super important, probably one of the most important processes to ever take place on Earth. Without photosynthesis, you have no humans here. We don't make it this far without this process taking place 2.8 billion years ago. And this first arose in bacterium-like organisms um, called cyanobacterium. Now, the cyanobacterium still have relatively simple cells um, it's not very complex at the time, even though it, they are able to conduct photosynthesis. It's not until later on um, when the cells begin developing subcellular components known as organelles, which allowed for the division of labor within the cell and um, specification of certain functions within the cell. Now, things began to get super spicy once DNA became uh, located within its own organelle inside the cell known as the nucleus. This caused drastic changes in cell metabolism and uh, as a result was the evolution of a different type of cell um, known as uh, eukaryotic cells. When there's no nucleus inside the cell, it's known as a prokaryotic cell. So now we are dividing um, into two different categories of cells. And this is important because the eukaryotic cells eventually go off to become uh, plants and animals, while the prokaryotes they remain as uh, bacteria, archaeans, and cyanobacteria. So it's important. So this, 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 this shift to the DNA being inside the nucleus is super important for uh, life as we know it today. So some of the uh, eukaryotic cells um, begin diversifying, and some of those cells um, obtained um, other uh, organelles, um, one of them known as mitochondria, and some of the other cells diversified and some obtained mitochondria and chloroplasts, which is the site of photosynthesis, where light is extracted as energy and then converted into carbohydrates um, for the plant. The eukaryotic cells that did not evolve to have chloroplasts ended up becoming things like protozoans, fungi, and animals. So this is where we fall into here as the, 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 the um, natural selection breaks off here. Whatever the environment was, it, 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 um, it deemed that it was more suitable to not have chloroplasts, or maybe there were cells that had chloroplasts, but it was in the wrong environment and was not suitable for that environment. So it's more beneficial to not have the chloroplasts, which uh, obviously we know ended up developing into other animals um, for a reason. So the eukaryotic cells that had the chloroplasts, those end up going, uh, developing and evolving into things like algae and uh, plants. Now, the earliest plants, they did resemble algae. They had algal uh, characteristics, but as mutations begin to occur, the different environments, um, they begin to lose those algal characteristics and then begin developing more features 
that were more suitable for land development. Now, this happened somewhere around 420 million years ago when the first land plants um, begin to um, evolve. But algae, on the other hand, it still closely resembles um, what it was over 1 billion years ago. It still has the same characteristics. The features are pretty much the same. Why? Because it's very, it thrives um, in the environment that it's in. It has no reason to mutate or to, uh, or, or to evolve into something else. Algae is still out competing all of the modern day plants. Algae, even though it's very fundamentally basic, it doesn't really have, uh, it's not really too complex, but it's complex enough for, th for the environment that it thrives in, like oceans, lakes, um, uh, streams. It's very hard to outcompete algae. I don't know, I don't, I don't know off the top of my head any type of plants that can outcompete algae, as basic as it is. Because, uh, you know, you'll grow algae in your aquaponics system before you grow, grow any plant. It, it, it doesn't need much um, resources, and it's very efficient at utilizing the resources that it has. So, you know, it's very basic, but it's very, very efficient, which explains why it's practically unchanged over the last one billion years. Now, if there was an environmental change that had a negative impact on algae growth, then the offspring of the algae, they all, a lot, when the algae is reproducing, those offspring already have mutations, but the, one, wrong, the ones with the wrong mutations don't make it to reproduce. So if you change the environment, then some of those um, uh, um, uh, offspring that have those awkward mutations, now in that the, the new environment, the changed environment may be suitable for that, for that change. And now those offspring uh, may be more suited for, or, or for the environment. And then they'll begin to reproduce and then that'll be a new form of algae. But at this moment, there's no environmental change that will cause algae to need to have that mutation. So we're most likely going to be looking at the same algae that we've seen in the past. It's most likely going to be the same algae um, in the future. And the scientific term for this for in, in plant biology is relictual features. This is These are primitive features that are pretty much unchanged. Now there's other groups of um, plants that have been uh, are well adapted to their environment as well, like ferns, these are another example. They, they haven't changed over the last 250 million years. The environment does not um, uh, a call for a mutation or some type of change via natural selection. So if, they're not, if they still fit the environment, they're going to stay the same. Um, also, uh, conifers, modern conifers, they haven't changed in the last 320 million years. If the environment stays the same, you can, you, most likely you can expect these conifers to pretty much remain the same. There's no reason to change. There's no reason. Now, from about 100 to 120 years ago, this is where we get the last evolved group of plants known as flowering plants. Now, these are the most important, as far as humans are concerned, the most important group of plants to develop. From here, obviously millions of years after, um, then you get the evolution of uh, vegetables, then you get the evolution of the fruits, then you get the evolution of a variety of other edible types of, uh, of plants. Um, that all come from these flowering plants.